Hello, this is the endodontic instrumentation tray I use. This is the tray. Let's talk about the different instruments on the tray. This is the syringe for the three to one water to sodium hypochlorite rinse that I'm irrigating the canals with once I've instrumented them. This is a 30 gauge needle on a dental local anesthetic syringe. There's nothing magic about the local anesthetic. It's just that the 30 gauge syringe fit perfectly into the canal of, or the coronal part of the canal of a tooth for irrigating out the dilute sodium hypochloride once I've finished the filing and irrigation. This is that 30 gauge syringe. And this is just a Hugh Freedy mirror, cotton pliers. This is a Patterson Dental Straight Explorer for finding canals if they're tiny and sclerotic. Do you want to get CE credit while you're watching Dr. Cutler's training videos? I know the answer is yes. So click the link in the description below at dentistrymasterclasses.com. It only costs $20 per month. And right now you can join for 99 cents. This is a steal. You are not going to want to miss this deal. These are huge, pretty pluggers. This is a small, this is a medium. This is a little larger plugger with a spatula on the other end. This is a Hugh Freedy small spoon. This is a larger spoon. This is a finger ruler. This is the real world endo system that I use. Now, I personally don't use K files. I put this on here because a lot of endodontists use K files. I use Edstrom number 10s. I use the rotary instruments. I can't live without the scout file. These are fabulous for finding tiny little canals. If you can't find them and you've removed some structure on the roof of the, can of the canal, of the pulp chamber, you can take these little files in your handpiece and just poke. Nine times out of ten, they'll find that tiny little canal. And then this is a, a one size does all file. And these work real well. So the scalp file, like I said, they're fabulous for finding little tiny canals. Lubricate the uh, pulp chamber and then take this file on a handpiece, rotary handpiece, and just poke on the floor of the pulp chamber. And more often than not, this will find the canal in my hands much better than a hand file. And once I've located the, the canal, and taking the scalp file to length, I'll come back with a number 10 Hedstrom file and file it really well and irrigate with the three to one water to sodium hypochlorite solution. So it's three parts water, one part sodium hypochlorite. And it's very important that you hand file well because if you use rotary files long enough, everybody's going to have a separated file. Now, what I found is if you've cleaned and irrigated the canal really well with the Hedstrom hand files or the K-type if you'd rather use those. Then if you were to have a separated file, it becomes like a silver point. It's not critical that you remove that separated file. But if you haven't cleaned and irrigated the canal well with the hand files and you were to separate a file, then you should remove the separated file. So these are the rotary files, and this is the medium, 25, 30, 35, and 40. This is the size I normally use. There's a larger size, and there's a smaller size. But with, with these files, you want to be sure you don't put any pressure downwardly. You want to just let the handpiece take the file down and then pull up about three pulls per file. And you, it's called the crown down technique. You start with the largest file and work your way down to the smallest rotary file. Now, what I like to do is start with the largest file and open up the coronal part of the canal so it'll hold this water to sodium hypochloride mix. And then I like to switch to the 25 rotary file and clean out all the way to the apex. But I start with this one, then go to this one, then that one, then that one, then hopefully this one again. I don't. I normally don't go 
from the largest to this one, to this one, to this one. But that's a good way if you want to do it that way. I've just found I can, I'm more efficient going from the largest to the 25, then the 30, then the 35, then maybe back to the 40. Now you can use just this one. This is a one file, does the entire endodontic procedure. And when you end up with this one, if you can go to the apex, a 30 gutta percha cone is going to fit the canal once it's been filed and irrigated. So this is another good one. Usually, I mean, I'll use this one sometimes in conjunction with the four rotary files. I, I normally don't use this one by itself, but you can, and I have, and it works really well. And this is the apex loader, locator. You can't live without this. And you want this number to read 0 0.5. That means you're 0 0.5 millimeters from the apex of the root. This is the handpiece. These are fabulous. And again, when you're using the handpiece, you want to be sure there's lots of lubricant in the canal and just let the rotary file just drop into the handpiece until it finds a little resistance and pull it up and then do that three times but don't push hard that's when you separate a file you're probably more likely to separate the larger files than the smaller files so don't push hard just let it drop in there if you're meeting resistance right away you may go back with the 10 heads from hand file and file a little bit more just be sure it's cleaned out really well with the Hedstrom hand file. This is the BC sealer. This is what we seal the canals with. Now, the most important part of sealing a canal, according to Dr. Alex Flory, who gave the endo course at my teaching center in Dallas for most of 20 years, is the sealer, not the gutta percha. Gutta percha just presses the sealer into the sides and the apical part of the canal. Now you don't want to fill the canal up with the sealer. You want to put it on the gutta percha cone or put a blob just in the coronal part of the canal and let the gutta percha cone take it to place and it'll fill out all the little crevices in the sides of the canal. Then these are the paper points and the gutta percha cone and this is the EndoPro burner. This cuts off the excess part of the gutta percha cone. Now, back in the day, we had to heat a uh, periodontal elevator in a Bunsen burner and sear off the gutta percha cones. This is so worth it. It's so easy. You just put this tip on the gutta percha cone part sticking up out of the, out of the canal and just sear it off. And then I like to fill the coronal part of the preparation with IRM and I've done this for 40 years now you can use composite I use the IRM and I plug it with this lar this medium-sized plugger so once we place the IRM and I want that mixed firmly not rock hard but just so it has some body it doesn't stick to your fingers and we've got a, a, a video in the library of dentistrymasterclasses.com on how to mix IRM so you want it where it doesn't stick to your fingers when you roll it together. And then once I plug it in the coronal part of the preparation, then I plug it with this amalgam plugger. Then I wet the cotton tip applicator and push that into the IRM. And then come back with this ball burnisher and burnish it into the margins. That's the dental minute. These techniques work and they work every time.